And so we shall continue with the class challenges. Now we are discussing the possibility of Peko being the killer. It is true that she was the only one that we have seen that was all wet when we met her. And it could be possible that she washed all the blood with the water bottles. Is she really the killer? Hmm. Don't just stay silent. Say something. Hold on, you bastard. Eh? You saw her at the diner. You never saw her near the beach house, right? Hmm. That is true. Yeah. So maybe she really was swimming. No one even saw her swimming. Yeah, that is true. I mean, did somebody see her swimming? No. I saw her. Huh? After I ran into you bastards at the diner, I crossed paths with her on my way home. Mm-hmm. So, so there's no doubt. She would have arrived at the diner from the opposite direction of the beach house. Hold on. That's strange. Didn't you just say this earlier? It's just a coincidence that I passed by the diner. I didn't even pay attention to the beach house. I went straight back to the hotel after I saw you guys. I didn't see anyone during that time. Oh. You told me you didn't see anyone. Don't try to tell me you forgot about that. You kind of shot you, you kind of shot yourself on the foot there, Fuego. And you are a yakuza after all. You would be good with guns, right? Uh. Fuego, what are you trying to do here? Not so fast. Too soon to decide she's a killer. Fuhiko... Wha what are you doing here? We haven't established how the killer was able to leave the beach house. Now that you mention it, you hide. Mm. The roadside door was blocked. And if it's impossible to leave from the beach side without leaving footprints, then how the fuck did the killer escape? Fuhiko, why are you protecting Peko here? You were really gung-ho on accusing Hyoko of being the killer. And you were talking about the class trial being the place of suspecting each other, to doubt each other. That's what the class trial is for in the first place. Now, how come you are protecting Peko in this case? Hmm... You're not the suspect. Peko is. That is true. Who cares about that? Answer me. If you have an explanation, then show me what you got. Hmm. We might have an answer. Huh? We might. Do you really? This mystery seems unsolvable. I mean, it is true. The door was still blocked on the back of the beach house when we arrived. We know that Hyoko went from the front to the tunnel, hence the footprints. But what about Peko? Let's say that she is the killer, and she was still inside the closet after... Hyoko left. How did she escape? Hmm. Well, if Peko is the killer, then I might just have an answer to that mystery. I see. Then let's hear this alleged method of escaping the beach house. First, let's establish how the killer escaped. The killer's escape route. I might know what it was. In fact, the only possible thing I can think of is that opening. Oh, not this, not this. The small window in the shower room. I see. That is the another possibility. Side doors aren't an option. The only other thing I can think of is... Well, nothing really. Except that small window in the shower room. Ah. You know what this means, Akane. We are talking about that possibility. Don't you know how high that window is? There's no way Peko could have reached it. 
Yeah, that is true. Unless Peko is a ninja. What if she was a ninja? She might have reached it by riding someone's shoulders, but then that person would have been left behind. Oh, but don't you don't you remember Akane? She might be a ninja. Is it possible an object was used? A rope, for instance? What if she was a ninja? And what happened to the rope after they used it? And don't say something stupid like they threw it outside. No, I'm not gonna say they used something so stupid like that. I'm talking about the possibility of Pico being a ninja. Of course not. That would violate the school trip rule. Yeah, that is true. I mean, despite Pico being a ninja, she cannot violate anybody. Littering is prohibited. Even if it might be evidence, rules are still rules. Also, I probably should uh, listen to what the people here have to say, because <laughs> I've been going on and on about Pico being a ninja. It's just... Ugh. You see? There's no way they'd be able to escape from that window. Mm. <laughs> no, they just have to use an object. Chiaki, don't fall asleep on us. We just said they couldn't use an object. You did? I thought you were saying they couldn't dispose of an object. I see. You don't have to throw it away if you can just hide it somewhere on your body. But if you're talking about Peko, she wore a swimsuit. She wore a bikini. Where can he even hide that object? Huh? Pekka was wearing a swimsuit, remember? Where would she even hide an object? Yeah, unless we're talking about... Uh... Huh. And if you say she hid it in her special place, I'll stab you in yours! Well, we don't have Teru Teru for that, so you don't have to worry about it. Even if a killer used an object to escape out of the window, they wouldn't have been able to get rid of it. So, the only thing I can think of is that the killer must have hid it somewhere. If that's the case... It can only be that, Hajime. Although I don't know how Peko used that object, but... It's the only thing that I can think of. Focus and think. The object the killer used to escape out the window. Oh, it is time for... Oh, Hangman's Gambit? Maybe we could have done something like... Like a logic dive? It's, uh, it looked like fun. Oh, okay, well... I guess so. So, what is the word in this case? Could it be this? No, definitely not. <clears throat> um... Yeah, it is this. It is the bamboo sword, for sure. It can only be that, because that's pretty much the only thing that uh, Peko had on her when we met her, when we seen her all wet. I mean, let's think about this, ladies and gents. Is there somewhere where you can put the object, like between Chandler Beach and the diner? I don't think so. I mean, you would throw it away, and that would mean littering and all. So it could be only be the bamboo sword. But the question is... Can we spit this? Oh, we can also spit this, okay. Okay... Ah, oh, shit, it was the D, okay. Bam. Boo. The question is... How did Peko use... the bamboo sword, though? Mm. Oops. Ah, oh, damn it. I should, I should probably pay more attention to this. I mean, the thing is... If the timer runs out, then it's pretty much game over. Okay, S. Not the R. Not the R, but... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No! I don't want Pico to be the killer! That's just... Uh, Pico... Bamboo sword on your back at all times, right? If I recall correctly, you had it then too. Despite the fact that you had a swimsuit on, you were still wearing your bamboo sword. 
Are you saying she used that bamboo sword to escape through the window? Yeah. Peko used that bamboo sword as a step stool and escaped out the window. A sword as a step stool? Huh? Used as a step stool for the hope to shine brighter than ever! You see? I knew it! I knew it was a ninja! Didn't I tell ya? A ninja could have climbed that easily! Hey! Congratulations, Akane! You and I think the same way! Ninjas know a climbing trick where they lean their sword against a wall and use the handguard as a step stool. Oh. Is that actually a trick that they know? A Japanese ninja. Yeah, I know, right? It is so cool! Indubitably! Miss Sonia, ninjas only exist in Japan. Yep. Well, it is a blue <laughs> sword, but I'm sure a slender girl like Peko could easily use it to climb. Well, Peko, do you have anything to say? Mm, now then, the time has come once again for the panic talk. I oh my. Mm, okay. <laughs> Well, I got my skills. Let's see if it's gonna be good. Let's talk a little bit about fever time and... Oh, okay. Oh, this is actually gonna be a lot easier on me if I use the fever time. From this point on, you will be able to use fever time by pressing the space key during PTA. Parent-teacher association. When fever time is activated, the tempo will be pushed to its max. But that's not all. You won't miss during fever time at all, either. By pressing the left mouse button when applicable, you can destroy your opponent's verbal assault. Wait until your focus gauge gauge gouge runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. Of course, you're not the only one who can get the upper hand. There's something called Mega Time that your opponent can use too. Yeah, I don't care about that sort of stuff. Like, by the time I use, like, Fever Time and get to the last portion, they are not even gonna be able to use Mega Time, probably. If your opponent activates Mega Time, your tempo marker will disappear, making it quite difficult to press the button in rhythm. So in that case, please time the rhythm not with your eyes, but with your ears and your passionate heart. If you can't clear it, you can always change the difficulty setting. Well, Sonia definitely has the passionate heart over there. I'm not gonna tell them that they'll have to redo the class child for that chapter, if they do that. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, what did you just say? If you can't clear it, you can always change the difficulty setting. I'm not gonna tell them that they'll have to redo the class child for that chapter. If they <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I can already change the setting. Well, either way, I actually, I actually prefer to be all mean, mean. I am a mean, mean finding the killer machine. I don't go for lower difficulties. Well, like, good luck and have fun. Hold on a sec, you bastard! You're saying she used her sword as a step stool and went out the fucking window? Then what about the sword? Um, what about the sword? It would have been left in the shower room, and she wouldn't have been able to recover it, dumbass. Oh. Hmm. That is a legit good question, Fuyuhiko. Fuyuhiko? Why do you even care? Yes. Why do you even care, Free Hickle? Shut up! Just shut the fuck up and answer me! If you have an answer, then fucking give it to me! If she used the bamboo sword as a step stool, it would have been left behind! Wow, such anger! Jesus! Why, Free Hickle? Well, no matter what. Got proof, you bastard! It's obviously impossible! It is pretty hard for me to Shut think up, that killer up. that Peko would be the killer. But you know what? I care about uncovering the absolute Shut truth! Up. And I don't care about you using the nigga time. I have my fever time, you bastard! I will uncover the truth and save everyone, no matter what. Alrighty then. Alright. Gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Also, we'd love to thank uh, Sayaka's melodious voice for this. Oops! <laughs> no, I'm not gonna show up. I don't even have organs. What the fuck are you talking Bamboo sword! Bad! This is the 
Huh, the bamboo sword back? Huh, that's interesting. If she used her bamboo sword as a step stone, she could have recovered it with her sword back. Um. How? When she leaned her sword against the wall to use as a step stone, she tied her sword back to it. Oh! What a wise girl! And after she climbed up to the window, as long as she hauled the bag up toward her, she would have been able to recover her bamboo sword. Yeah, that is a good uh, possibility. That is a good explanation for that. Uh, it would seem that you have lost once again, Fihiko. But... You're, you're hiding something here, Fihiko. Just tell us. Why is it that you're getting so worked up? I see. Not just the bamboo sword, but even the sword bag, too. She used them both to escape. Hakane said she's like a ninja, but it's nothing as silly as that. Oh, come on, Nagito. I mean, the, the, the ninjas are cool, you know. Simply put, only Pekko could have performed this feat. An escape plan befitting of the ultimate swordswoman. Okay, you, you do that face once again, and I'm gonna be mad at you. <laughs> God dang it, Nagito. Stop doing that face. Even so, how disappointing. If you'd only let me work with you. Would have been an even greater plan. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you just back off. Peko? Uh, um, is it true? Did you really kill Mom? Uh, ho hold on. You're just making assumptions. You, you don't have any proof. I won't accept this unless there's proof. Hmm. Yeah, we don't have solid proof. We need to think of something else here. Got it, you bastard. It's fine. Oh. Huh? I said it's fine. Saying anything more would just be an exercise in futility. Uh? Oh. Peko? Are you confessing? She admitted it just now, right? She admitted she's Mahio's killer, right? But... Is this right? <laughs> Again, Hajime? Like, we're talking about somebody completely different? Wow! Well, that, that is a lot of twisting over here. Um, well, I would have... It would be great if Peko is not the killer, but given all the evidence that we found... Hmm... It is hard to believe that it's somebody else other than her. Even though Fuyuhiko was the one arguing with us, Pico just admitted it so freely. Among flowers, the cherry blossom. Among men, the samurai. I commend your decisiveness, at least. Very well. If you admit it, this ends now. Let's cast our votes. Okay. Hurry up and vote. Uh, hold on. Let me confirm one thing first. Mm hmm? Can't have waited until after the voting. This is important, and it relates to the voting. It's about Peko's motive. That is right. Well, she... Uh, if we are talking about the people that were inside the game, and if one of the people inside the game were the killer, then yeah, we can talk about the motive over here or something like that, but... Peko doesn't really relate to Twilight Syndrome like at all. I do have to wonder about the Peko's motive in this case. In the end, you had no connection to the events depicted in Twilight Syndrome murder case, right? Mm hmm Then, why did you kill Mahiru? Hmm. So it's about that. Let's see. If I must answer that question, I must say it was for the sake of justice. Justice? Huh? Justice? Justice? Or... Were you, aren't you talking about judgment? In order to... 
protect the justice of this world. Protect the justice of this world? Oh god. I think uh, Pickle is starting to become crazy because of because of the lack of furry animals. Huh? I do not sully my hands to satisfy personal grudges. There is only one reason I care. For the sake of protecting justice. Oh. What are you saying? Justice is what makes humans human. It's a virtue that human beings should be proud of. Uh, Pickle? Are you okay? Uh, like, I think this is more than just being crazy for furry animals. What, what the? Oh, okay. Nagito became crazy. Teru Teru became crazy. I became crazy? Jesus Christ. Is everybody gonna become crazy in this killing game? What the fuck? Justice is the eternal sun and the enduring moon, the protective father and the smiling mother. Hello! Earth to Pecco! If justice ever disappeared from this world, the world would immediately freeze and people's smiles would vanish. I will not allow that. Uh, Pego, what are you doing? Uh, you're not you're, you're, you're not gonna attack somebody, right? It, it's fine, just stop it. Justice must always be there to guide us, to shine bright above our heads. I'm telling you to stop it! So I must fight. I must continue to fight to protect Justice. Wait, what are you talking? But you admitted that you are the one who killed Mahiro. Wait, unless you were talking about something a bit. What? This is. Could she be. Could she be what? As the light of justice shines upon my mask, I expose the heart of malevolent evil. Huh? Justice complete! Uh. The center of justice that is pierced by justice. The lead star of justice that shines in the night sky. That would be me. Sparkling justice! The... What the fuck? Now then, let's execute justice! What? What the fuck? Yeah, you pretty much described my feelings pretty well here, Kazuichi. What the fuck? Pego, what are you doing? Huh? Apparently, somebody. Apparently, one of us was sparked in justice. Huh? But then again, we we had genocide a show in the first killing game, so. Uh. In the name of sparkling, shining justice, I have come to deliver justice. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. What's going on? What's this? Chill. A <laughs> Pecco finally snapped. Mmm. Yep. It would seem so. I think everybody is gonna snap in this killing game. Justice is a serial killer who claims to be an ally of Justice. Clad in her various hero masks, she is a serial killer who exclusively targets other criminals. She is supposed to be... but... huh? Ally of Justice? So that's why you're wearing a mask! This mask is the dividing line. Just like various idols, the sun is revered because it lies just beyond your grasp. Jesus Christ, look at those eyes. Behind the mask. Ugh. Justice should also be the same. <laughs> I love that she's using like small emoticons over here. Sparkling justice! I, I don't get it, but this is becoming really crazy. 
What? What the heck is this? This is Danganronpa 2, Hajime Hinata. Wake up to reality. Peko is the cuter. Why is it turning out like this? This is turning out to be a surprising turn of events. Uh, wanna come on? Just wake up, man. Just you're you are. There is something really, really sweet going on right over here. This is like genocide Jill over here. Wake up, man. Hey, now's not the time for you to be sleeping. Yeah, now you're you're missing out on the good stuff here. Take a look. It's a killer. Nope. Only one thing will uh, wake up, Monokuma. And that is despair. This again? <laughs> huh? She's pro he's probably dreaming of genocide Jill here. So what's your answer to my previous question? Why did you kill Mahiru? Obviously she's gonna say in the name of justice here. This world must always be bathed in the light of justice. I must not allow even one shadow. Evil must be eliminated immediately. Oh! No matter what, I must not overlook evil. And with the power of the emoticons, justice shall prevail. Evil? Are you saying Mahiru is... Huh. To think that the power of emoticons would become so strong, even after the first killing game. Apparently Monokuma was up to something <laughs> with that. If you knew about that incident, then you must have played the game, am I right? Yes, that is right. Pickle, you must have played Danganronpa 1, 2, didn't you? And because of that, I was able to find the killer's accomplice hiding on this island like a sewer rat. Wait, 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 what? Find the killer's accomplice? Then, the reason you killed Mahiru was... To protect justice, of course. In order to protect justice, I have become its merciless sword. Eh? And executed justice. <laughs> I don't think that Emoticon fits with the devil sight of Peko over here. Holy crap! She's such a stereotypical psychopath! <laughs> She's so gross! Peko, is this your true identity? My true identity? <laughs> I have already forgotten who I am. It just shows my determination. My determination to protect by throwing away what's most important. I'm willing to become anybody to shower this world with justice! <laughs> oh boy, uh, Peko is... She's going to destroy us all. I mean, look at this earthquake over here. Hyoko is going crazy there too. Jesus. I can't stand this anymore. Let's just end this farce already. Hyoko. <sighs> end it. He's right. This we need to end this already. The killer in the end. There's no mistake it was Peko all along. Let's go over this incident one more time and then let's end this. Alrighty then, I guess it's, it is time for closing argument. Uh, what do we have over here? We have all of this. Mahiro arrives at the beach house. Uh, so, Mahiro and Hyoko are talking. They both receive the letters. Hyoko. The killer trapped Hyoko. Killer killed Mahiru. The killer moved the body to block the door. And then the killer washed herself with water. 
Kyoko ran away, she escaped, and then came to the diner. Mm, okay, well, let's see. So, Mahiru arrives at the beach house. This is definitely a good place for that. It seems Yoko made a promise with someone. I don't think that really... Hmm... Yoko sprinted away. Okay, well, we already know that. Yoko left a big evidence. That will be the footprints in the sand. The killer holds the metal bat. That will be when the killer... Okay, so... You seem that this is the only one left. It seems Yoko made a promise with somebody. I guess this is gonna be one, right? There we go. Mm, the next stock, the killer went inside the surfboard case. Okay, time to wash off the blood. Mm, where should I hide? Inside uh, the surfboard case. Akane is covered in blood? Um. Okay, well, this would be it, but nah, we cannot put that anywhere. Hyoko arrives at the beach house. Let's see, I think this would be... First one to arrive at the beach house was... Hyoko. The killer dropped the lemon-flavored gummy. This is one right over here. No? This isn't what matches. Let's think about this. What did the killer leave next to the bo- Ah, oh, next to the body of Mahiru. Okay. Ah, okay. The killer left the gummy after Hyoko ran away. Otherwise, uh, Hyoko would have found out about that gummy. Alright. The killer takes the bamboo sword out of the sword bag and... What do they plan to do? Okay, we already have that. We already have this. Hyoko wakes up. I think this would be good for... Right over here? Mm, okay, that fits. Plastic water bottles. Okay, this would be good for this. The killer forged two letters. This would be good over here. There you go. And the last stock. Let's see. Let's put up the bamboo sword. Just in case. Huh? Okay, this should be good. No? Okay. So it's definitely not that. A pretty anime girl mask. This is where... This is what she left. Near Mahiru's body. Hyoko is still sleeping. Already have that. Tie the bamboo sword to the sword bag. This should be here, right? There you go. Here's everything that happened in this case. The incident began this morning when Mahiru spoke to Hyoko. Mahiru most likely played Twilight Syndrome murder case. The video game provided to us as the mode. She probably wanted to discuss it with someone else who also appeared in the game as a character. Kyoko accepted Mahiru's invitation, and they promised to have a more detailed conversation about it later. However, someone else overheard their exchange. The killer. The killer eavesdropped on their conversation and used their promise to devise a specific murder plan. By preparing a specific item, they plan to manipulate the two's actions. And the killer was pretty darn mad. In the name of justice. That item was the letters. They sent fake letters to both Mahiru and Hyoka. The letter Mahiru received told her to come to the beach house at 2.30 p.m. And the letter Hyoko received told her to come to the beach house at exactly 2 p.m. By providing different times, the killer was able to lure them to the beach house separately. Hyoko totally trusted that letter, showed up at the beach house at 2 p.m., just like it said, and was drugged into unconsciousness by the killer lying in wait. After putting Hyoko to sleep, the killer immediately hid her inside the closet so they could frame her as the killer later. At 2.30 p.m., Mahiru arrived at the beach house. She was completely unaware that she'd been targeted for murder. No, Mahiru, please don't! 
It's a trap. The killer struck the defenseless Mahiru with a specific weapon, the metal bat that was left at the scene of the crime. And Skadoosh. <laughs> the bat was brought down onto the back of Mahiru's head, and with that, she took her last breath. According to Mikan's autopsy, Mahiru died instantly, so she probably never knew who killed her. With that, the killer achieved their goal of killing Mahiru and began to tamper with the crime scene. They dragged Mahiru's body so that it blocked the door leading to the road. Also, the mask found at the scene of the crime was something the killer personally left. I'm not really sure why. My guess is it's something similar to a calling card. Hmm? That's how the crime scene we discovered was created. However, by moving Mahiru's body, the killer got blood splatter on them. Plus, the shower room had no water because it was out of order, so they couldn't wash it off. But the killer expected something like that to happen. Instead of the shower, the killer used something else to wash the blood off their body. And that is the plastic water bottles! They used plastic water bottles that were inside the beach house refrigerator. We can assume they carried the bottles to the shower room before the sequence of events had happened. In place of showering, they washed the blood off their body with water bottles instead. However, they had no choice but to dispose of the empty bottles in the beach house's trash can. Littering is against the rules, and it would have taken too much time to throw them away somewhere else. After the killer washed off the blood, they hid in a specific spot inside the closet Hyoko was in. The killer hid inside the surfboard case that they had already emptied beforehand. After some time had passed, the sleeping drug used on Hyoko wore off, and she woke up. I can imagine how badly Hyoko must have panicked when she came out of the closet. I mean, she made plans to see Mahiru, who lay dead right in front of her. From the shock and panic of being considered a murder suspect, Hyoko fled from the beach house. Because of that, she left footprints in the sand. Everything was a trap set by the killer to frame her. After Hyoko left, the killer finally came out of the surfboard case and placed a gummy that they brought with them to shift our suspicion toward Hyoko. Ironically, placing that gummy is what helped clear our suspicion toward Hyoko. Finally, the killer began preparing to escape from the beach house. They couldn't risk leaving their footprints in the sand, so they escaped the beach house using a different route. The small window in the shower room. However, that window is rather high up and can't be reached easily, which is why the killer used the bamboo sword. Da -da -da -da. The bamboo sword they always carry with them. The killer took the bamboo sword out of its bag, tied the bag to the sword's handle, and used the sword as a step stool to reach the small window while holding the sword bag in their hand. As long as they're able to reach the window, all they had to do was pull the bag to retrieve the sword. And so the killer left the beach house and appeared before us as if nothing had happened. But their wet hair and swimsuit didn't dry right away. There also weren't any towels at the beach house. So when the killer met up with us, they said they had been swimming for a while as an excuse. So how about it? This is the truth behind the incident you caused. Isn't that right, Peko Peko Yama? It can only be you, Miss Peko. Case closed. I see. Um, what of it what? Have you been listening to my closing argument or not? God dang it, people never listen to me. She's like, totally cool with it. I haven't done anything to be ashamed of. What are you saying? You killed Mahiru! Wrong! I punished evil in the name of justice! Yeah, but you still killed Mahiru! That's no reason to condemn me. Ah, what a lot of poor cock. <sighs> Erico. There's no way you can kill me. Oh. Uh oh, she's gonna do something. Justice can never be killed. You should all know that as well. What are you saying? What are you <laughs> The way he said that. What are you saying? 
to protect what's most important to you. You must be prepared to throw away something equally important. Understand? Also, I love that um, on Teru Teru's uh, portrait over there, instead of an X, it has like forks that look like an X. Hm. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Then I shall be direct. Justice must carry on. <sighs> Justice. In order to keep justice. To keep me alive, you all must give up your lives. That we shall definitely not do. Good God, you are talking like Nagito here. Uh, are you serious? It's not serious. It's justice. If I fall here, who will combat the evils of this world? Now. Follow your hearts of justice that reside within you all, and save my life to protect justice. Hurry and carry on justice. Give me a break. Who's gonna die for you? If we let Peko go, we're all gonna get killed. For the sake of grand justice, a few sacrifices are unavoidable. <laughs> The justice that you give your life to protect will never go to waste. I can't stand her anymore. Let's vote already and execute her. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we should. Um. However, b before we do that. Huh? Onakuma, the vote. Hurry up and let us vote already. <sighs> I'm awake. Oh, finally you're awake, man. You have been listening. You have been missing on a lot of stuff here, Monokuma. But who cares? Ah. So you're using my method of listening, but not really. Just like I do to Nagito. Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote. Hmm, I guess. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? I guess. That's... Alright, let's do this. <laughs> Such heart-pounding excitement! And the winner of today's class trial is... Peko Pekoyama! Congratulations! You have won one ticket to hell! Last trial end. Pardon me. There. Can please have a little more time. Uh. Uh. Sonia. Whoa. Whoa. More time. Um. Pardon me. Can we have a little bit more time? Please let us continue our discussion. Okay. Well, me personally, I was actually kind of thinking of ending the episode right over here. So that the next episode we're gonna talk about the motives and all that, and the chapter and all. Well, uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna continue this in the next episode. When we start the next episode, you can tell all you want, Sonia. You feel like there's something suspicious about this, eh? Hmm. I do have to wonder. <laughs>